The following presentation by the Chestnut Hill Conservancy is part of our History at Home collection of activities from our archives. Community stories from our past in the comfort of your home. History at Home is made possible by our generous members and supporters, so thank you. This illustrated lecture, entitled Historic Interiors, was originally created as a captioned slideshow for the October 2019 Night of Lights exhibition along Germantown Avenue. Historic Interiors was developed by Laura Keim and produced by Leah Silverstein and Molly Murphy, with narration by George McNeely. A photograph taken in the 1930s of the dining room of the Randall Morgan Estate on the east side of Chestnut Hill, built on land that had contained the Civil War era Mauer Hospital. The house was built around 1885 in the Queen Anne style. This view shows the fireplace alcove with original interior paneling that was likely painted white in the later Colonial Revival style. English and Continental tapestry chairs and a classic Edwardian bearskin rug. A view of the impressive two-story entry hall at Windmore. Again, the Queen Anne interiors have been updated in the early 20th century. The fireplace, woodwork, and stair railing are English Georgian revival, and the hall has been brightened up with white or cream paint. The simple colonial revival stair hall at Lavrock Hill the country house of Isaac Tatnell Starr on East Willow Grove Avenue. It was designed around 1912 by the Philadelphia architectural firm of Cope and Stewardson. The simple furnishings were a reference to Pennsylvania colonial interiors, and some would have considered them appropriate for what was originally a country house. The house was expanded and redesigned between 1915 and 1918 by the New York architect Charles Platt, Sadly, this house was recently demolished. A festive window display from the 1920s for John McCormick, electrical contractor, at 8436 Germantown Avenue. One of the signs encourages buyers to fill the empty sockets now, presumably with one of the various lamps on display. An interior view of Steigerwald Country Store in the 1950s. The fireplace, country pine paneling, and Windsor chairs were created to echo Pennsylvania colonial interiors and likely reflected broader efforts to recolonialize the shops of Chestnut Hill at that time. A photograph taken in 1978 of a room in the house at 142 Bethlehem Pike that had been built originally in 1883. This view shows later renovations and unexpected modern furniture in that late Victorian house. A view of a sitting room in the Queen Anne style house at 8605 Seminole Street, taken in the late 19th century. The house was designed by the Hewitt brothers as another rental property for Henry Houston and was similar to a number of other houses on Seminole Street. The house was significantly altered after a fire in the 1930s. This interior shows a characteristic Victorian assortment of unmatched chairs around a central table positioned under a gas lamp that could be raised and lowered for reading or sewing in the evening. A view from the 1980s of one of the dining rooms in the Valley Green Inn. That building was originally constructed in the mid-19th century, but the interiors were styled to look colonial, with the hutch featuring a group of drinking glasses and assorted farm tools on the back wall. A photograph likely taken around 1925 of the library at Stonehurst. The French chateau designed by the noted New York architectural firm McKim Meaden White 
for Henry Houston's daughter, Sally, and her husband, Charles Wolcott Henry. The fireplace, bookshelves, and cornice are in an early colonial revival style, but the accumulation of art objects reflects an earlier Victorian sensibility. The sofa and chair appear to have their summer cotton chintz slipcovers. A side of the simple kitchen of the Wallace House at 226 West Gravers Lane, likely taken in the mid 20th century, showing an array of manufactured kitchenwares. A view of about 1915 of a lounge or reading room at the Philadelphia Cricket Club. The current building was designed by George Pearson and completed in 1910. The style of this room is colonial revival, with the plasters flanking the wide arched fireplace and the curved broken pediments above the mirrored side doors. The furniture reflects the informality of a club that was used mostly in the summer months, with a mixture of upholstered furniture and more relaxed wicker chairs. A view from the early 20th century of the main rooms of the house at 334 East Gowan Avenue. The owner's eclectic collection of taxidermy includes a huge moose head, a baby bear, and innumerable flying birds. A photograph from about 1942 of the interior of a Route 23 trolley on Germantown Avenue with a female conductor in the booth at left. During World War II, women replaced male conductors who were called away to serve in the military. As the buses do today, the trolleys provided a cheaper form of transport than the regional rails. A photograph from 1924 of the main reading room at the original building of Lovett Library in Mount Airy. It was constructed and endowed in 1887 by Charlotte Lovett Bostwick as a memorial to her father, Thomas Lovett. The elaborate chimney piece is surmounted by shelves containing a variety of items that were likely intended to offer instruction and inspiration to visitors. A dining room from the Wallace family's house at 226 West Gravers Lane from the later 20th century. Originally constructed as a simple village house in the mid 19th century, the Wallace family decorated this room in the prevailing colonial revival taste with largely unadorned white walls, a gate-leg dining table, Hitchcock chairs, and a hooked rug. A view from 1955 of the interior of the bird-in-hand consignment shop on Germantown Avenue. The wares offered at that time were surprisingly similar to what we can buy there now. A view out onto the terrace of Ballygarth, the house designed by the Philadelphia architects Willing and Sims for Mrs. Benjamin Franklin Pepper and completed in 1919. A view of the dining room in the world-famous postmodern house designed by Philadelphia architect Robert Venturi for his mother, Vanna Venturi. Completed in 1964, the traditional furnishings contrast with the more modern architecture. A view of the central stair hall of High Hollow, the house that architect George Howe designed for himself in 1914 in Chestnut Hill. The sighting of the house with dramatic views out over the Wissahickon Valley reminded Howe of the similarly sighted Italian Renaissance Villa Medici in Fiesoli, outside of Florence. The furnishings also reflect Howe's sophisticated interest in Italian Renaissance interiors, with hanging tapestries, heavy pottery, and two Bargoigno cabinets on stands to the right. A recent view of the main living room at Key Waden, the prominent early colonial revival house designed by the architect George Pearson and completed in 1889. The ceiling features paneling patterns derived from early American Pilgrim period furniture, and the walls are covered with scenic wallpaper, likely manufactured by the French firm Zubert, which was popular in that period. A view of one of the bedrooms at the house completed in 1927 in Winmore for Samuel and Allie Rotan. It has alternatively been known as Lane's End, the Wharton Sinclair State, or Guilford. 
Designed by Philadelphia architect Robert Rhodes McGoodwin, the house incorporates imported components removed from older English and French houses. A view of the morning room or library at Lane's End, with 18th century English paneling reportedly removed from the poet Alexander Pope's house outside of London. In the early 20th century, well-traveled Americans liked to install such European period features in their country houses. A recent view of the dramatic double-height living room of the house that Philadelphia architect Louis Kahn designed for Margaret Eschrich, completed in 1961. She was a niece of noted woodworker and designer Wharton Eschrich, and the architect beautifully incorporated traditional Pennsylvania woodwork into this very modern house. A period view of the elaborate double parlors of Philalina the Italianate house built in Mount Airy in 1845 for George W. Carpenter. This view is from later in the 19th century and shows the rooms decorated with characteristic high Victorian panache, including a bewildering melange of chairs, tables, and bric-a-brac. The house was demolished in 1882, making way for the many turn-of-the-century houses in the Pelham neighborhood. A colorful painting of unknown date by Edith Emerson, portraying her life partner, the noted painter Violet Oakley, in the dining room of their house in Mount Airy, called Cogsley. Edith Emerson was the director of the Woodmere Art Museum for many decades. An 1898 photograph of the sitting room in Edge Hill, which was built back in 1853, this room had been elaborately redecorated in the Turkish or Moroccan style, popular in the late 19th century aesthetic movement. The room featured patterned wallpaper, low tapestry covered sofas, and Middle Eastern inspired pottery and occasional tables. The family moved to another house nearby only shortly after this photograph was taken, and the house is now part of Norwood Fontbon Academy. The impressive English-Georgian Revival Drawing Room at White Marsh Hall in Windmore. Designed by Philadelphia architect Horace Trumbauer, the house was completed in 1920 for prominent banker Edward Stotesbury and his ambitious second wife, Ava. It was reportedly the third largest house in the country at that time. The room is decorated with a mixture of high-style 18th century English and French furniture, some antique and some made to order. The immense central ballroom at White Marsh Hall. The Stotesbury's entertained lavishly, but their fortune was significantly impacted by the stock market crash of 1929. Mrs. Stotesbury finally moved out during the Second World War, and the house provided secret storage for paintings from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The extensive property was gradually redeveloped with houses, and the main house was finally demolished in 1980 after being abandoned for a number of years. A view from about 1905 of an enclosed side porch at Woodmere, the house of industrialist Charles Knox Smith at the corner of Germantown Avenue and Bells Mill Road. Smith expanded his house in several stages to provide space for his large collection of art. The house and his collection are now the Woodmere Art Museum. A cut and paste panoramic view from about 1905 of the large paintings gallery that Knox added to the back of his house. His extensive collection of mostly 19th century academic paintings was hung in the then popular salon style to cover the walls and featured sculpture and decorative arts of the same period. Another view of the paintings galleries at Woodmere. The elaborately decorated chairs in the front are late 19th century Chinese, made from rosewood with marble insets. Such furniture was made for the export market and quite popular at that time in Philadelphia, particularly for families that had been involved in the China trade. A view from around 1905 of the parlor at Woodmere, with its heavily carved and decorated 19th century furniture and decorative arts you can spot recently installed electric ceiling lights in the arch towards the back. The central stair hall at Compton, 
the house that was designed by Philadelphia architect Theophilus P. Chandler for brother and sister John and Lydia Morris and completed in 1887. For his woodwork designs, Chandler drew inspiration from a range of architectural styles, including English Jacobean, High Victorian Gothic, and perhaps Eastlake. After Lydia Morris's death in 1932, the estate became the Morris Arboretum. The main house was torn down in 1968.